Now let's talk about the objections. We touched on some of them, we talked about some of them. Now I will give you, remember when they say, you give someone a fish, you feed them for a day. I will teach you how to fish. I will give you a process you can use for handling any ob objections, any conversation, whether it's expireds or sellers in general, or buyers, or any situation where you need to analyze and respond quickly. I am not a big fan of canned answers because that's what they are. They sound canned, they don't sound natural. Mm -hmm. You have to have them embedded in your memory, which sometimes fails you, especially if it's a tense situation where you really need to think on your toes. And then sometimes maybe inappropriate. There is time where that rehearsed one just fires off, but there are times where they sound hollow and they don't fit right, and you do sound like a telemarketer or a salesperson, which is not what we want. No, we want you don't. that sense of, I'm here to help, I'm here to see what the situation is like, like a doctor or a CPA or a lawyer that brings a notepad, asks a lot of questions, and offers a solution. So here's the system of construct. The step one to that is, and the beginning will sound a little bit similar to what we discussed previously, mm -hmm. but this will go into a lot of detail. Analyze. You simply analyze it. And you take the objections, and we'll, we'll take a couple of the examples you gave me. This were by the way, very, very real, and they come up all the time. I'm sure well, you've heard we'll, them dozens we get of times. Always, we get different ones every day. So. Yes. But the, you know, they're generally the same, you know, uh, scope of where they are. Yeah. Sellers only have a couple of uh, objections, and although they go to a college to sell they, objection yeah, that college, we, uh, they're we very want, good at it. We like to go to that college. Yes, and they're they're prepared. We learn the answers. So the question you always ask is, what's missing? Is something missing in the com in the communication with the seller? If I'm talking to an expired listing, first an objection pops up. Um, Let's take the first one you gave me. That was a good one. We're going to wait till the market gets better. So that comes up in the communication, on the phone, or in person. So I analyze what's missing. And the first thing that can miss, that can be missing is report and connection. That's usually what's missing. You get these objections because you have not connected yet with the person you're talking to. And now we're going way beyond expired listings. This mm -hmm. can be applied to communication with your kids, your spouse, your friends, anybody. Suddenly when something is off, the first thing I would look for is, number one, is report and connection. That may be missing. And the way you know that is, mm -hmm. check with yourself. Am I really engaged? Do I really feel what this person is feeling? Is it empathy really flowing? Do we have that loop connection mm -hmm. where I feed you something, you feed me back, and we're on the same wavelength, and it just yeah. feels right? Usually if that's missing, the way you bring it back is you reconnect. Right. You reconnect, you go back, and you can do something like, I remember you mentioned something and you bring it right back and you connect with them. Yes. Make sense? Well, sometimes that objection will come up mostly in off over the phone mm -hmm. uh, because it's maybe an excuse to get you off the phone. Could be. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Absolutely. And not really the true, uh, uh, true reason. It's just maybe they, uh, they went to that school. Very true. So the second one could be what's missing is desire and motivation. Right. They simply don't need to sell. They don't, the drive to do something, there are only two reasons people move. There are only two. They're getting away from something that's very unpleasant, painful, mm -hmm. or they're trying to reach for something that's very pleasant, pleasurable. Those are the only two reasons. It comes down to those two emotions. And yes, sometimes it can be a combination of both. Right. But one is always prevailing, one is dominant. Mm -hmm. And if that drive, that feeling is not strong enough, if the discomfort in their present home is not strong enough, they're not cramped enough, or if the traffic noise doesn't drive them crazy, or if that beautiful new home in Temecula, in the wine country, right. is not their heart's desire, right. the objections come up, the disconnect will happen, and you don't really have a good seller. No. Yeah? No. So, and the third one, what's missing is knowledge and clarity. They simply don't know how the process works. They're not clear. Right. Usually you hear things like, well, if you have a buyer, bring him by. I hear that. I hear that a lot. I mean, you hear that, right? Yeah. What that also can mean is they just don't have enough knowledge. They don't know how the process works. There is not enough clarity in their mind. They think the process is very simple. It's like selling a car. You bring someone who's interested. Money is exchanged. Product is exchanged. Done. We both know that real estate is a lot more complicated yeah, than that, a, right? There's a few things more, and some sellers want to um, skip the moment. So you analyze. You say, well, what's missing? It could be reporting connection desire, motivation, or knowledge and clarity. Or it could be a combination. Mm -hmm. You know, they may not know how it works and they're not even that interested. It's up to you by asking questions and spending enough time with them mm -hmm. 
like a, any professional would, like a doctor would, mm -hmm. that would take x-rays, that would do examination, this is part of the process you analyze. You as an agent, if you get that clarity, and this is a skill, this is, you get better at it as mm -hmm. you do it, and I'm sure you're very good at it because mm -hmm. you've been doing it for a while. The analysis can happen within a split second. It does, you don't need to spend a lot of time to try to mm -hmm. figure out, well, let me think, what is going on here? Lack of motivation, lack of desire, lack of knowledge, or we don't have rapport, we're not connected. Right. So that's step one, always analyze first, don't guess. Two, let me make sure I got the nose, I'm telling you, this is brand new stuff I've been working on for a while. Identify. So once we analyze it, we identify it. Is it, what type of objection? And we talked about it in our last session, remember? Mm -hmm. It could be A, a question, that simply is not answered. We only will risk with an agent that holds open house every week. Mm -hmm. That could be a question. Is it really a good idea to open houses, to do open houses? Would you do an open house for us? Mm -hmm. It's just in a form of an objection. Right. So the first variation could be, it's a question. The second one is a diffusion. They're just diffusing the situation. They're just putting this little fence up. So it could be a question. It could be a stall. They're stalling. Uh. And there may be reasons why they're stalling. It could be something as simple as, we're not comfortable making quick decisions. We got burned before, so we need to buy some more time. That's usually when you get, we want to think it over. So, question, stall, the third one is a brush. Yes. And brush simply means, no connection, I just want to get rid of you as soon as possible. This is an unpleasant situation for me, I don't want to deal with you. Mm -hmm. That happens sometimes. Probably not as much, I would imagine. No. But when it does, you feel it. You recognize that this person just simply blocking me off. So right. that's a brush. And then the final one is a condition. My husband's job transfer fell through. We're not going anywhere. That's really a condition. If the condition, if the situation, the circumstance has changed, mm -hmm. nothing you can do about that. No. If they're going into foreclosure, that's a condition. Nothing you can do about that. Unless you work that type of market, obviously. But right. So these are the four types. Uh, Question, stall, brush, or a condition. All right? The th four, let's see here. Third, third. Three one. is you clarify. You clarify. Clarify in your mind first or with the seller second. Mm -hmm. If they say, um, that goes again, don't uh, judge or don't assume. Be clear. So you clarify with the seller when they say something like, well, we want to think it over. I understand that. How much time do you think you need? Get mm -hmm. clarity. Maybe it's five minutes, maybe it's five days. You don't know. So clarify. Be clear. Right. Understand. Or understand what they're really asking. Right, right. If they bring up open house, for example. Do you open houses? Clarify. What do you mean? Did the previous agent do them? Do you think they're effective? You know, there are ways. Right. And they will also feel like you're paying attention, you're listening, right? and you're engaged in a conversation. Because right. remember, people love to give opinions. They love to give their point of view. It's right. important to them to be heard. So you give them a chance to express and be heard. So you clarify, that's yeah. number three. Number four is the actual answer. So how do I answer? Well, there are four ways. Uh, you address it. Let me just flip this over. A. Address. You simply address it. You come up with an answer and how I'll show you the construct method will walk you through the process how to build the right answer that's not memorized it's not just a script a sales script because you feel like you're saying a sales script they feel like you're trying to sell them mm -hmm. not a good way there's a better way the contract way I'll show you but um, the second one is you diffuse it and diffusion is I showed you an example of a diffusion mm -hmm. especially with ones that sound a little bit ridiculous you know a little bit out there like bring us a buyer I'm, and I usually diffuse with the laughter, with the smile, saying, oh, I wish it was that easy. Suddenly I diffuse it. Suddenly they feel like, yeah, maybe it is a little far-fetched of what I said. So right. that's, that's a diffusion. It can be with laughter. It can be with ridiculing just a little, of course, without insult. Right. That can be an You don't want to do that. Absolutely not. But you can diffuse. You can right. kind of disarm it, if you will. The, let's see, where are we? Diffuse. The third one is bounce back. Now, you can bounce back with a question. And it can be something like, well, if we did, would that work for you? Or how would you see that happen? Or what do you think should have happened? Or how would you like that to unfold? Mm -hmm. That's a bounce back question. We just fired right back at him. See, what happens is human mind can only focus on one thought at a time. We cannot think two things at the same time. It's impossible. Simple test. 
think of your mother's and your father's name at the same time. Right? You can't. It's impossible. It's either or. So, if I'm engaged in a conversation with Neil and he throws an objection at me, if I give him a relevant question, if I bounce back with a question, his right. mind has to lock in on that question and look for an answer. That means he has to release mm -hmm. the initial objection and an emotion that's attached to it. So you bounce it back. And then the final one is offer alternative. And again, you can combine these. It's a good idea and the construct mm -hmm. will allow you to find combination that works the best in the situation. Mm -hmm. An alternative would be, well, you know, that's a really good point, but I found that through my career doing this works a lot better. Here is why. Mm -hmm. And you engage them in something that they find interesting because you're offering a benefit in their situation. Mm -hmm. And see, now you're offering alternative solutions. Right. That's, that's exactly the principle behind right. it, offering right. alternative. The next step is confirm. Once you addressed it and you got that feedback, the conversation mm -hmm. went well, confirm. Did I answer your question? Are you clear on that, why this is a better idea now, Neil? Um, no, not really. And then I go back and I re-engage. Right. You know? Well, and I go back. And it's a dialogue. Right. And I will not move until Neil confirms. So you're comfortable now? Go you explained it perfectly. And that's my signal to move on. Right. That's the final step. I move on. Okay? And that's the construct method. Now, how do I build construct? So if you talk to an expired listing and they say, well, we're just going to wait. Mm -hmm. Till the market gets better. Market improves. Improves, yes. Okay? So that's just one of the objections. Now, let's establish a fact first. Mm -hmm. You're in a supermarket. You have a cart full of groceries. Mm -hmm. and there are two lines. One has about five people, one has two. Which one would you choose? Probably the two. Of course. Why? It's faster. Yeah. Because we don't want to. We don't want to wait. People don't want to wait. And that's a fact. I right. don't like to wait. If I have an option of an express lane, if I have a way, I don't like to wait around. So right. when they say, we'll want to wait, do you think people really like to wait, especially if they tried to sell before? Um, no. And, and sometimes the underlining is when they bought it, how, what is their, are they going to make any money on it? Yes. They may not have enough equity in there. They may be exactly. behind on their payments. We don't so my that. point is, there is something about that statement. Maybe their plans have changed, that's a possibility. But if they just tell you, we want to wait, no, people don't want to wait. There is no benefit in waiting unless they have a solid reason to wait. So, but let's establish it as a fact. Don't take it at the face value because it may or may not mm -hmm. be true. Make sense? We establish the objection, we establish the fact. Okay. Okay, now we know the fact most people don't want to wait. No. That's our starting point. Now we're going to build constructs. Constructs are like these little hooks of certain facts or certain mm -hmm. truths that you can use to A, ask a question and then offer an alternative. One of the constructs you can establish is if the prices go up here for your home, mm -hmm. they will go up for a home you're going to buy. Mm -hmm. So you're right. When we wait, you're going to get more for your house. Mm -hmm. But you will also end up paying more for wherever you want to go. Chances are if the market goes up, it goes up. All right. That's a possibility one. So that's one of the constructs you can build. Okay. The second one construct you can build, better market means more competition. Right. There'll be a lot more homes for sale. There'll be a lot more competition, right. a lot more sellers like you, think like you, will wait till the market turns and we'll put it up for sale. Mm -hmm. When things get really hot and crazy, it's yeah. hard to find homes. Right. You have a lot better selection now to find a perfect home. So that's another construct, perfect home. Another one, quality of life. There are many times mm -hmm. you can't even put a price tag on it. If you really stay in this house, mm -hmm. your life will pretty much stay the same or maybe even get worse, as opposed to being that beautiful house in Temecula. Right. What is it about Temecula that draws you in? And find what it is. Mm -hmm. And you start comparing what are they losing by not being willing to take for whatever price fair market mm -hmm. value would be for their house. Mm -hmm. How is their quality of life going to change? And mm -hmm. this is a driving emotion right here. Mm -hmm. Now you're digging deep, deep into that avoiding pain, gaining pleasure. So that's mm -hmm. another part of the construct. Final construct is 
we can still find a good buyer today. You can still sell. Absolutely. So now I have an objection. I go through the process, identify, see what's going on, what is really behind it. Mm -hmm. Is it a stall? Do they really not have enough desire? Because it could be any of those. And if the lack of desire is there, then mm -hmm. I don't need to proceed. But if I identify it as just like, they're just hesitant, they really want to do something, but I just get a feeling that something is blocking it. Mm -hmm. You know, They don't really want to wait, I already established that. I pick these, right. build these up front right. in my mind, and then pick one. And the way you pick them is, you can of course combine them. You right. ask them, are you really comfortable where you are? That would be one of the questions I would ask. Right. Another, and I'm going right for the quality of life. Right. Or I would ask him about the buyer. Well, you know your neighbors around the corner on Maple Street, did you know they sold a couple of weeks ago and they get a pretty good price for it. Right. So there are buyers out there looking for homes like yours. What right. if we could find you one like that fairly quickly, get you a good price for it so you could be in Temecula in let's say three, four months. Right. Would that work for you? Right. Boom. Now what did I do? You, uh, you gave them an alternative. The, absolutely, and bounce the question uh, back. Bounce it back to them. So they lock in on the question now. Now, now uh -huh. I would very pay very close attention to how would they answer. Now, mm -hmm. not necessarily just with words, right. but also with the feeling. What is the feeling underneath it? Do I sense that, yeah, there is a glimmer of hope, there is that fire still burning. Mm -hmm. They just discouraged. Or do I feel like these people won't go anywhere? Make sense? Uh, yeah. So that's how you, you build it. So you're not memorizing a response. You select from these little constructs, from right. these little hooks, the proper answer. And it goes back to asking the right question. Right. Okay? You with me? I am.